How's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and today we're talking about the matchmaker and the matchmaking problem that's been going on recently. We're going to kind of go over what I think is the main problems, what, what the things are that are really negatively impacting our game at the minute and, and really go over anything that World of Tanks console will actually try and implement. And also give some suggestions that you guys have given me and give my own thoughts and opinions and stuff like that on, on the matchmaker and how we can try and fix it. Hopefully Wargaming will actually listen to this and kind of take our advice or you know our suggestions or just at least uh, acknowledge what we're thinking and just give us some sort of feedback as to what our suggestions are like and what they're actually trying to do. Um, because I think that's really important in order to keep your player base on board and, and keep the new players that you've got whilst also you know giving them an experience that is actually nice rather than just what you think they'll like. I think communication is always key between you know your, your customer and, and the people that are providing the service. So what what do I think is the main problems with the matchmaker? Are, are, well, for me, it's definitely the the flooding of tier ten, tier nine, and tier eight with brand new players that have barely played the game. They don't have commanders. They don't have equipment. They don't know what the equipment's like. They don't know anything. They've got very little guides or tutorials that they can go to. You know how how many of them are they going to go onto YouTube and search up guides and stuff like that? Probably you know even even it even though there's so many players that play this game. It's probably only 10%, probably, who go on YouTube and search it up. Probably less than that, I expect. Um, and, you know, having something in-game that allows every single player on the game to be able to um, have a look at the tutorials and learn a bit more is obviously going to help uh, a lot. Well, in my opinion, anyway. Because, yeah, they don't have to look at the tutorial in-game. But if they ha want to and they don't have to do any external things... That they they're more than likely gonna do because you know no one wants to be rubbish at a game, do they? No one actually wants to be the worst player on the team. Obviously, you want to get the best player on the team. You want to be the one who does it the most. You want to be the most valued player in your game. Um, so they're more than likely gonna have a look as long as it's accessible. If they have to leave World of Tanks, go onto a different site like YouTube or you know Twitch or something and have a look at someone else. They're less likely to do that. So I think you know they're just going to leave the game they're not going to stay they're not going to try and put more effort than uh, is needed if it's not given to them so i think implementing a tutorial system will be really good for newer players and just allow them to get some more information that isn't necessarily that easy to understand straight away you know penetration values equipment consumables what do they all do yes i've got guides on my channel that you can check out they'll be in the description below but you know they need more in game and that's that's the key thing i think additionally this whole flooding of the matchmaker i don't think that the new players should be able to get tier 10s and tier 9s i get it that it's part of the season pass and that you know you've given out tier 10s you can't limit uh, you know if you're new to be able to get the tier 10 and you know get some rubbish reward like a tier 5 or something but I do think that you could change the system slightly, not this season or any previous season. You can't like remove what you've already done. But I think going forward, my suggestion would be, you know, instead of getting the tank straight away when you reach tier 100, if you gave out an operation or a contract like you've done with the mercenaries, if you do that and, you know, they say in this contract, it's quite a shorter one, but it does provide some kind of key things that you have to do. They don't have to be specific to a nation or anything like that. If it's simply, you know, deal uh, 500,000 damage in total to be able to get the tier 10. Or deal, you know, that might be too much. You might only want 200,000 damage. Uh, just have some small select things. And also say that you have to play 50 games at tier 10 before you can get this tier 10. Because that means that they're not going to be able to just jump straight into tier 10. They're going to have to have ground all the way to tier 10 themselves. They're going to be able to then unlock the tank that they've already got from the season pass. I'm not saying that this is a complete system. And obviously it would need to be looked at and balanced and stuff like that. But I think if they implement something like this where players have to then you know put more time into the game to unlock the tank that they've got. 
and you know everyone's going to get it it doesn't go away it's not a timed operation it's just a case of you know once you've got to tier 100 it then becomes a contract that you can constantly do whether you're a new player an old player a veteran player someone who's been beta testing the game anyone can complete it it's just that you have to have a, a certain set of things that you you may be more accustomed to if you're an older player um, than you are a newer player where you know say say one of the ones is um, you know destroy 400 enemies or something like that a newer player is going to probably be less likely to complete that in a faster time and it's going to take them a little bit of time before they get up to doing that and therefore they're going to learn the game a little bit more they're going to be able to get to tier 10 before then they're going to learn the sort of maps and stuff like that so I think giving them a bit of a time gap between when they received the tank um, from when they actually got the season pass completed is something I'd, I'd look at. Or additionally, I'd increase the length of time it takes to do the season pass because right now I can do it. If I play full on for three days, I can complete the season um, within three days. Easily. Easily three days, I reckon. Within the first week of this uh, operation being out, or this season being out, I completed it in four days, I think it was. I uh, got to rank 100, unlocked everything, uh, and then there we go, literally done. And then I went on to my second account within a week of playing pretty um, irregularly because um, I had exams and stuff. I managed to complete that in, in one week. This was the following week, so there were two weeks of challenges. And now I'm on my third account doing the season pass as, uh, as well. Um, and I've almost done that as well. So not only have I got my first, my second, and my third account almost to rank 100, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's too quick. And I think that, you know, on my second account, I managed to do it in like 150 games. So you can imagine what a new player was going to be able to do. It probably take them probably more like 300, 400, 500 games to fully complete the season pass. But you can imagine exactly what, what they're, what they're going to be like at the end when they receive a tier 10. They're going to jump straight in that. They're going to constantly play that because it's the pinnacle tier. And, and they're just not going to be that great. They've not got the information. I mean, they might be better than some people, but it's it's really it really shouldn't be the case. And I think this whole flooding is, is, is a real problem. And I think that that's one way to deal with it. Um, is it the only way? Probably not. Uh, it's probably not the only way unless you kind of removed the fact that you can get tier 10s and tier 9s. Um, from this and made it more um, tier rates that are already in the game but then you're going to have the problem of these new players just playing tier 8 and then they're going to get taken out by tier 10s who are in the same games because of the plus 2 minus 2 um, and that's just going to be a real problem um, because they're not going to enjoy the game they're not going to stay on the game and eventually they'll just leave um, because if you're not enjoying a game you and it's free you've not invested any money into it um, other than the season pass itself, it's um, they've got no reason to stay. And if it's not enjoyable, that's what they're going to do. They're going to leave. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on that. There are a few other things I want to mention, which is the map rotation that um, I know you guys have been talking about a lot. And the matchmaker for that. As well as the plus two, minus two and plus one, minus one. Um, and what I think about that. So first we'll talk about the the map rotation and I think that this is this is a key thing that everyone's going on about right now it, it was really high ranked on my poll that I did as to what's bugging people because obviously it's the gameplay that people want to do on this game you know the HUD and the garage and stuff like that are kind of visuals um, in terms of the HUD uh, for the garage not not the actual um, in game because obviously that is it is gameplay but what you need to kind of take from this wargaming if you are actually watching this i don't know but i'm really trying to emphasize the fact that they need to keep in contact with their community they need to really focus on trying to um, work out the problems that are in this game so what would i do with the maps i need from my own personal experience some sort of roadmap as to where we're going in terms of the amount of maps we're going to receive i think that would really help people and players if we had kind of even a news section within the game that kind of comes up with um, what's coming out, a roadmap or something in-game 
because I know that they have like the little articles that pop up on the screen, but they're not consistent and they don't have enough information for us to be able to really get anything proper out of them. I think coming up with the roadmap like they have suggested in their Twitch streams need to be something of, of high priority on their list. Even if it's just a conceptual one that they say that is subject to change, it might change. Um, just so long as we know which route they're kind of taking the game in and where they're going to be focusing their efforts in the next coming months. Is it going to be this whole modern tanks that they've been kind of hinting at in the in the tech tree with the top secret bit of the chieftain, um, the modern chieftain that is, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure and I'm really hoping um, that they'll give us some sort of information or at least a more detailed bit of information surrounding uh, when we'll be getting maps. I know that they're coming in late February, so if you're, if you're watching this video right now on the 15th of February, I know that it's not going to be too much longer before we get two new maps. There's one old one which is Highway and a new one that we've never seen before. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm really hoping that, you know, when that comes out, they'll start releasing more and more maps uh, more regularly than they have before. And, and we'll just get some some of the older ones that we've already played. I'm not saying that, you know, I need them right, right now, but it is getting to the point where it's getting very tedious playing the same game, the same maps, the same tiers, seeing the exact same tanks every single battle, you know, being in games with eight m48 a2 patterns is kind of boring to me um and and especially when they're doing things that they probably shouldn't at tier 10 and that people usually learn uh, after playing the game and getting there um through actually grinding tech trees uh, no one seems to be doing that currently and that's just because of the the whole matchmaker and the economy and everything that's going on with the game right now that really needs to be worked out and i'm hoping that wargaming will actually give us some uh, feedback as to what they're doing more in depth than they do already i know they give the patch notes and what they're aiming to fix but we're more looking at what they're actually trying to do not not fix we want what they're actually preparing to do in the future not just what they're preparing to fix that was in the game already and that you know they've removed and then put it back in because i don't get why that's uh, why that's relevant to the long-term future of the game and so i think implementing uh, some sort of new system or some sort of roadmap like they said in their twitch streams is is definitely on my my big priority list of things that they need to do uh, to just inform the player base and give us a reason to keep playing because uh, if i don't know what's going to happen with the game am i going to want to keep playing probably not um, the only reason i really do it well continue to play is yeah i enjoy the odd game gets really frustrating now though um, and I just think a lot of it's down to obviously YouTube and, and being able to interact with you guys and enjoy the game um, but it's getting very tedious and really really annoying to play so I think a bit more information between the developers um, and their customers us um, is going to be really really crucial as to whether uh, people continue to stay or uh, or leave so that's a couple of suggestions from me I don't want to make this video too long, we'll go over some more suggestions that you guys have come up with uh, as well in the coming videos. I will have a news video coming out very soon, uh, probably tomorrow when the new update hits uh, your consoles in the morning. Um, but other than that, I think it's everything I, I really want to talk about in this video and some suggestions as to what I think the matchmaker can, can be done. Uh, or what can be done to fix the matchmaker on World of Tanks console uh, for both obviously PS4 and Xbox One, you know, PS5 and Xbox Series X, wh whichever console you're on, uh, hopefully this will this will come into effect. I don't know, this is not actually a news video, this is just speculation and what I'd love to see in the game. Um, please feel free to leave all of your comments down below, give me some suggestions, further suggestions, expand upon what I've already got. Any kind of discussion is more likely to get Wargaming's attention and kind of look at an engagement. So, you know, liking the video, disliking the video, just giving it any sort of interaction will really help. Uh, comment anything below, uh, hopefully towards the actual discussion of the video. Don't go commenting random stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really think we need to uh, kind of get bring this to Wargaming's attention and kind of give them a bit of discussion and suggestions. Uh, I don't want any of this, I'm never playing update 6.0 again, it's the worst thing in the world, because that's not 
you know, if, if it's the worst thing in the world, why are you watching a video about, you know, the update 6.0 suggestions? I mean, if you want to try and actually fix the game then it's 100% good to give uh, actual constructive criticism criticize the game definitely because it needs criticizing there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things in the game that I do not like whatsoever and so I'm going to give you my honest opinion I'm not going to filter it but don't go just degrading the comments into just like utter rubbish because that's that's not going to help anyone probably just going to devalue what our suggestions are and that's that's what I don't want so if you're commenting absolutely tripe then I will just remove it from the comment section so there's not much point but other than that I hope you guys have a good rest of your day I hope you guys enjoy any games that you have on World of Tanks and uh, I hope to see you in the next video if you want to check out any of my other videos go ahead on my channel otherwise there'll be some on screen right now that you can click on uh, to have a look at some different content that I create. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day once again, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.